All right, let's focus on using a CSV file as a data source and using Spark SQL to interact with that source. I'm going to start up the Spark shell here, but pay attention to this package argument that I'm passing to it. It's the first time we've seen something like this. This is what this is going to do is download a jar file from the Spark Packages org website. And this jar file is going to make our lives much easier when working with CSV files. I'll show you here as the Spark con as the console is firing up. But the sparkpackages.org website is going to be downloading this CSV package and making it available to the console so we can use it. Also, before we begin, notice that you might have noticed already, but in these lectures, I've upgraded our Spark version of version 1.41. This allows the SQL context to be available to us right away. It also takes advantage of the data frames um, API as opposed to the schema RDD. Like previous examples, we're going to continue to use the baby name CSV file because it would work fine for us. And we, I'm presuming you already have it available to you. So how do we load that baby names file? We're going to load a little bit differently in this case because we we're going to use the SQL context. In the SQL context, we're going to specify the format to use and we'll take advantage of the CSV package. That's this argument here, com, databricks, spark, CSV. And then we're going to pass it a couple options, such as the first line is the header row and it is fine to infer the schema from this data. In other words, SQL context Take your best guess at the type of values you're reading. Is it an integer? Is it a string? Etc. And then lastly, we'll use load again to specify which file we want to load. So that succeeded. And next, we're going to call register temp table. And register temp table, as I mentioned in the introduction, is what makes it convenient for us to actually use SQL as if that temp table was, well, a table. For example, now that we've registered that table, we can run SQL. And this SQL, hopefully you recognize, is we're just trying to find the distinct years in the baby CSV file or the names table. So that returned a RDD, and as we've seen in the past, if we want to cycle through that RDD, we can collect and for each it, and we'll print it out to the screen. All right, so we're rolling here. I want to show you a couple other th things that you might find help, might find uh, valuable. Data frame RDD allows us to call, call print schema so we can learn about what sort of types were inferred. We see that it's been integer, string, string, and integer. Okay, that looks good. Let's, let's work on a little bit more, uh, let's say complicated examples, but also similar to what we have done in the past with our actions and transformations. What if we run this SQL query where we're going to call out the distinct first names and we're going to order by the count that they occur per county and we're going to limit, limit it to 10. Okay, so we have a new data frame, RDD, and now let's print it out. We might guess that Jacob is the most popular name, but we know we'd be wrong because we're not accounting for the count value in that CSV file. Hopefully this sounds familiar. So let's change that query to, to sum the count column 
here, if you can see that count, and this we'll call sum on it. We're also using things that I didn't mention in some of these other queries, things like group by, order by, um, descending, ascending is fine, we're limiting it. So this should look very familiar to people with a SQL background. Let's take a look at what this looks like now. And from here, we can get to the true, the true most popular name, and that's Michael, Matthew, Jaden, etc. So pretty cool, isn't it? We can still use tools um, that we're hopefully used to in SQL against data sources, including CSV. So this was a, a good introduction for some of the other data sources we're going to be doing in the next lectures, and that's JSON and JDBC. So we'll see you soon.